This theme of this um, summit is the mystery about sex. The mystery about sex. Um, I love it so much because, interestingly, it is something that everybody is interested in, but nobody wants to talk about. <laughs> At least publicly. We talk about it in private. Everyone is interested in it. Nobody wants to talk about it, but a lot of people are already involved in it. Are you here, somebody? Everybody is interested in it. Nobody wants to talk about it. And a lot of people are what? Involved already. And um, I am very passionate about it because um, on my job as a counselor, I have seen the impact, the impact that sex has in the lives of believers and even humans in general. And just like any other problem, the first place to go is knowledge. Come on, say with me, knowledge. No, I can't hear you. Say it loud. I say knowledge. The first place to arrest any problem is knowledge. So, that's what, and thank God for your, for your man of God for putting a conference like this together. I know the other speaker coming is, is she's, she's mama, she's somebody you also enjoy. Praise God. So, I believe after this week, something has to shift in the way you are seeing sex, in the way you are even seeing yourself. Satan can't harm you until he affects how you see yourself. Are you here, somebody? That's why some people are constantly looking for deliverance. For you to look for deliverance, Satan first has to convince you <laughs> that there's something inside you that you need to be delivered from. May they not cast out the Holy Spirit from you. <laughs> because they've been casting and casting yearly. When they cast, cast, they don't to cast, they will not finally cast the Holy Ghost out. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. So Satan first has to convince you something is wrong with you before he can make you do what you should not do. That's what he did to Eve. He told Eve, the day you eat of this fruit, your eyes will be open. You will be wise. He was making her feel you are not wise. That you need to become wise. He was making her feel your eyes are not open. That your eyes need to become open. He's still using the same tricks for young children today. So that's why the young teenage girl feels she's not yet a babe until she starts having sex. The young boy feels he's not yet a cool guy. He's not a dude until he starts having sex. So that's why people that sleep around are more bold than virgins are. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Anybody that's a virgin is hiding it. Then people sleeping around, they will post it for the world to see. That's the madness going on in our world today. Sinners are riding on horses and the righteous are trekking by foot. Come on, say God forbid. I'm trusting God that after this great summit, many more virgins, many more righteous people will be bold about the truth. The devil is louder about his lies. And you see, the way life works, is not about who is saying the truth or not, it's about who is shouting more. And if you get what I'm saying, perception is more important than reality. I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying. Sometimes it doesn't matter whether they are saying the truth or not. If they keep saying it before long, everybody will start believing it. Lies would have gone three laps before truth even starts on the starting mark. Come on, say, I hear. So we trust God that in this week of, of expose on sex, Something will shift in our minds. I'm going to start today on what nobody tells you about sex. Then tomorrow I will do some facts about sex. Then I will also do, um, you know, how to overcome sexual temptation. Then if possible, if I can take some questions tomorrow, it will be nice also. So please write down the questions, send the questions they will tell you how to do that so that I can even address and prepare for them and address them tomorrow. Because apart from just preaching at you, I want to get your own life situation. Alright? You don't have to write your name. Just write the question. So that nobody will know it's you. <laughs> so that I can speak specifically into your life. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? 
I can't hear you. I say, you getting what I'm saying? Sex is powerful, guys. And I'm talking today about what nobody tells you about sex. We talk about sex a lot, but we are always saying the wrong things. Young children are learning about sex from pornography, from different areas. It's just that we are saying the wrong things. So I'm here today to tell you the things they are not telling you about sex. They must have told you many other things about sex. Me, I'm here today to tell you what nobody has told you about sex. So that you'll be prepared for life. I have 10 points. I'll run through them as fast as I can. Are you ready this evening? Uh, you, I'm not feeling your energy. Are you ready this evening? Hmm. Point number one. What nobody tells you about sex is that sex is not just sex. It is not just sex. One of Satan's biggest tricks is to tell you that there's nothing there. Nothing there there now. Then they put meter there. Nobody they check. It's just sex. The devil's biggest trick is to make you feel sex is not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Nothing there there. No big deal. It's just sex. Listen. It is not just sex. It is a serious issue. The devil wants to tell you it's not a big deal so that we can have more casual sex. What he won't tell you is that casual sex will cause casualties. Casual sex will cause what? Casualties. It's not just sex. Sex is serious business. It has always been and will ever be. Part of the ways to know that sex is not just sex is to get to the purpose of sex. When you understand the purpose of sex, then you understand it's not just ordinary. It's not just sex. The purpose of a thing is how we know the power of the thing. I said the purpose of a thing is how we know what? The power of the thing. If the devil makes you feel he's just say, what is there? What is there? Every small children they drown. Everybody don't drown. What they worry you? <laughs> if it's just sex, then why is a rape such a painful and serious issue? Maybe they snatch people's bag. Do you see them die for 10 years? Maybe they snatch people's phone. But the day they snatch somebody's sex, which is called rape, you see how serious it is, both for the raper. And the rapey. <laughs> Ask anybody that has been raped, or if you know anybody that's raped, the impact stays with them for life. If it's just sex, why is this so serious? They've snatched people's phone, they've snatched people's uh, bag, and they survive. But when you rape somebody, when you take sex from somebody forcefully, the impact lasts forever. The reason is because it's not just sex. Your spirit and your soul is connected to sex. I'll say that again, sir. Your spirit, your soul is con- In fact, let me say it well. Your spirit, soul, and body is connected to sex. There's no other sin you will commit that affects all parts of you like sex. In fact, let me not even call it sin, because that also can give you a negative idea. There is no other activity, because inside marriage, sex is good. Are you here, somebody? I'll talk about that tomorrow. So there's no other activity you will do that will affect your spirit, soul, and body. And I will show you all this in script. It's not just sex. Satan's biggest trick is that it's just sex now. Not just sex. How many times do you even sleep with you? It's just sex. Nobody's putting me there. Nobody's counting it. It's just sex. It's not just sex. When you understand the purpose of a thing, you understand the power of the thing. Sex was created first and foremost to join two people together. Permanently. It's one of the major purposes of sex. To do what? Join two people together. I want to hear you. To do what? 
I want to hear you louder. To do what? Join two people together. So if it's just sex, <laughs> why are you joining to many, many people? Every time you sleep with someone, you are joining with them. Let's look at scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I will start from verse 13 to verse 20, then I'll go to the exact verse I need. Is it going to show on the screen? Yes, please. So DJ, please put it up because I'm going to read from your screen. It said, meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. He said, now the body is not for what? The body is not for the kitchen, but for who? For the Lord. And the Lord for who? The body. Next verse. He says, and God had both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his own power. Next verse. He said, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? He said, Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? He says, What? God forbid. Next verse. What? Because he was shocked. He said, What? Know ye not that ye which is joined to an harlot is what? One body. That's, he's saying, don't you know that whenever you join with an harlot, you have become one. One body doesn't just mean physical body. He's saying one person. Somebody get what I'm saying? They say, don't you realize that whoever you join with, you have become one person. With that person. Go back, DJ. He said, what? Know ye not that whosoever you... Go back to the rest, yes. That joined to the is one body for two. Say it, he shall be what? One flesh. Go to verse 17. I'll come back to 16 later. Go to verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is what? One spirit. Continue. Continue. DJ. He said, do what? Flee fornication. Come and say it louder. Do what? Flee fornication. I'll talk about that tomorrow. Every sin that a man doeth is without what? The body. But he that committed fornication does what? Sin it against his own body. Next verse. He says... That way it stops. Give me next. Yes. Next verse. I'm going to verse 20. Say what? He said, know ye not that your body is what? The temple of the Holy Ghost. Which is in you. Which you have of God. And you are not your own. Next verse. He says, for you are done what? Bought with a price. Therefore glorify God. Where? Your body. And where? In your spirit. Which are God's. I told you at the beginning, sex is one of those things that affects the whole you. Spirit, soul, and body. Don't let any devil tell you it's just sex. It's not just sex. It affects your spirit, soul, and body. Go to verse 16. Go back to verse 16. It says, What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? Look at the next line. For two, saith he, shall be what? I can't hear you. For two, say it, he shall be what? One person. Who, who remembers the first time this phrase was ever used in the Bible? Who remembers that? Genesis chapter 2. Where marriage, where the first marriage was instituted. DJ, give me that. Genesis 2. Where he said, therefore, shall it good. No, Genesis 2. Genesis 2. Genesis 2, from verse 18, 19, towards the end. It says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and the two of them... Okay, go, 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 go to um, 20, 24, I think. Go to 24, quickly, DJ. Good, thank you. He said, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and what will happen? Shall be one flesh. This is exactly the same phrase that they used when you sleep with an harlot. Because in the realm of the spirit, they don't recognize whether it's casual sex or serious sex. If I shoot you gun and I don't mean it, and I shoot you gun and I mean it, will the effect be different? You go see die the die. So I no no na mistake now. Nah. Why the verse? <laughs> That's how you sound. When you sleep with a harlot and say it's just sex, mm, your spirit, soul, and body doesn't know that. 
in, their, in the mind of the spirit, you are mad. There are people here, you are mad about 13, 14 people. You have joined with them. The wedding ceremony is not the joining, no. The wedding ceremony is the public announcement of the joining, no. Many people, you know, people focus on wedding so much. We spend billions on wedding. That's not the marriage. There are, I mean, your pastor can tell you now, I mean, and I'm also a pastor. There are many people we, we join on the altar. They went home and they couldn't have sex. And marriage was annulled. I can't, I can't, they, couldn't, they can't have sex. For whatever reason. What we do here is a public announcement of the marriage. That's not the marriage. In fact, that's how we tell people to kiss the bride. They are telling us that when they reach home, they will continue this thing. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Sir? What we do on the altar is the ceremony, is the ceremonious part of the joining. It's a ceremony. That's why in different cultures, they can do it anyhow. It must not even be in church. There are many people that are married and they just traditional they did. It's also marriage. Because that's not the joining. That's others are ceremonies. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. The real joining in the eyes of God. That's why in the scripture you, you won't see church wedding emphasized. You won't see anyone emphasized. Because that's not the real joining. The real joining is when you have sex. Because in the mind of God, you have now caught a covenant. Part of what sex is for is the cutting of covenant between two people. In Bible days, do you know what happened in Bible days? When two people marry, the father-in-law, that's the, the wife's parents, would lay the bed with white bed sheets. The groom and bride would enter the room. Everybody would wait outside. It's not like today, where after reception, we're all going home. No. We are waiting outside. Two of you will go inside. Have sex on that white bed sheet. If they find out that the girl is not a virgin, Because that white bed sheet, the purpose of it is that when you have sex for the first time as a woman, usually, there is a breaking of the hymen that brings blood. There, you can't have a covenant without blood. There must always be blood in a covenant. Is somebody getting this? And marriage is the number one covenant. There can't be covenant without shedding of blood. That's why our relationship with God is a covenant, but there also has to be blood. Jesus had to shed his blood. That's why I said, this is my blood of the New Testament. The word testament means covenant. So even our relationship with God, there has to be a shedding of blood of Jesus. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So that's why women come with high men because the first time they're going to have sex, blood is going to flow. That's the official cutting of the covenant. And to stain the bedsheet and the man will bring it and come to the window and show the white bedsheet stained with blood and everybody will clap. Hey. That's when they will start going home. That the marriage has actually started. If they come to the window and the man do like this, <laughs> they will drag the woman out, drag her parents out, and stone them to death. They will say that this woman is a harlot, and she wants to spread the spirit of whoredom or harloting in our community. They will stone her to death. Because sex is the real joining. Of a man and a woman. It's not the ceremony we do here. If you notice, ceremonies they do in different cultures is different. In some churches, they don't even give ring. They give Bible. So churches, they give ring. So Because you can do the ceremony in how you like. It's a ceremony. It's not really a big deal. Now, of course, if you're a Christian, if you're born again Christian, you understand the power of coming before God. So you, you do that because of your covenant sense. But that's not the real marriage still. The real marriage starts when man and woman have sex. That's why the same place, the same thing they used to describe the first marriage in the Bible. It's what they used to describe the person that sleeps with the harlot. They say in the realm of the spirit, oh, you are married. So, but the devil will tell you, it's just sex. There's nothing there. The devil is a liar. He has always been a liar and will remain a liar. Are you here, somebody? He's destroying young people for nothing. He knows how much sexual sin destroys people. It's called the doctrine of Balaam. In Bible days, they were trying to curse the children of Israel. They didn't know what curse to place on them. Every time they hired a prophet, Zibelam now, Balak. Every time they hired that prophet, the prophet to curse the children of Israel. Every time he opened his mouth to curse them, blessings will come out. He now told them, you cannot curse whom God has blessed. However, he now gave them a secret. He put that onto the curse of Israel. He said, send naked girls amongst them. Send seductive girls. Send slay queens. Slay mamas. With tight things. <laughs> With tight, tight cloths, seductive cloths, 
That's why the way you dress to church matters. In fact, the way you dress as a human being matters. I've seen your, I've seen your pastor's video that went viral over it. I saw Papa's video that went... You saw, how many of you saw that video? That went viral. That's, that's, that's sound doctrine. Some ladies, the way they even dress to church, somebody's managing their Christian life. They come to church and the small life they have is taken from them. Are you here, someone? He can't even concentrate in worship because everything you wore is so tight. Your underwear is showing under your cloth because everything is tight. You say it's fashion. Because they can wear it doesn't mean you can wear it. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. He said, come out from amongst them and be ye separate. You will stand out. Are you here, somebody? You can look classy without being seductive. Are you here, somebody? See mama, see my wife. They are fine, fine women. But they don't have to be naked to be fine. Bishop, you know America is the center of freedom. You know America, their philosophy of the country is land of the brave, land of the free. They believe in freedom more than anything in America. But yet, I've not seen their first lady be naked. With all that freedom. I've not seen any woman in politics, in leadership, be nakedness. Never seen it. Show me they believe in freedom. Why can't the first lady come with bra and pants? And say it's fashion. You can't be more free than America. You can't be more stylish than where they are creating the fashion. Their presidents still have sense. Are you here, somebody? So sex is the joining of two people. So he told them, that prophet told them, if you want to question of Israel, send naked girls amongst them. And the Bible said they sent naked girls amongst them. And for you know, they started committing fornication and adultery. And in one day, I think it's seventy something thousand people or for some thousand people died in one day. People that they could not curse, they cursed themselves. And Satan is still using the same trick till tomorrow. One of my points is that sex doesn't hurt anybody. I will show you how it hurts people. Because that's what the devil tells you. It's just sex. No big deal. Come on, tell your neighbor it's a big deal. No, say it with confidence. Say it's a big deal. Sex is the joining of two people. That's where the marriage is. That's where what? The marriage is. Hmm. Is the strongest bond between two people. Now, let me tell you something. <laughs> because I'm, a, I'm also a professional relationship coach, I'm certified with um, different boards and all that. I, and I, sometimes I have to teach in some places scientifically. I don't, use, I don't have to use scripture. Science is the one catching up with scripture. It's not scripture catching up with science. A lot of things scientists are writing, we, we have known it scripturally long ago. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? You know, there's madness, feminism madness everywhere, where, where some women are saying, oh, women should be like men. Science have known since that women cannot continue to walk at the rate that men walk. Because men are work-oriented, women are family-oriented. CNN released a report some months ago that more and more women are quitting work to go and stay in the family. That's CNN, and they're not born again. It's based on statistics. Are you here, somebody? They found out that the chemical that is being released, when a woman and a man is chasing financial targets or hustling for work, the chemical being released in a man is testosterone. It makes him feel happier. So a man, even, that's why I see when men brag about work. They say, boy, I was in traffic for three days. I mean, I was traffic for three hours. The drama will say, ah, you're all good. Me, I sleep for office. Amongst men is a good thing. But because the chemical being released on them, when they work hard, the chemical release on them makes them work harder. They're okay. They get pride from it. For women, it's opposite. When a woman is stressed at work, cortisol is being released in her. So that cortisol reduces her immune system. Kills her. You're literally killing her gradually. But the happy hormone that is releasing a woman that makes her feel good is when she sees a baby. Oxytocin. So when she's breastfeeding, she's happy. That's why even when a woman goes to a hospital and other women see her baby, they don't know her from anywhere. They all surround her baby. They say, do baby. They are all happy to see baby. Men don't want to see baby. 
Science is just catching up. But scripture has been clear about it. The first thing God gave Adam was work. The first thing God gave Eve was a husband. So I could have told them from scripture. They don't need 10 years research to do that one. Are you here, somebody? So I can give you many more, but no time. No to waste your time. But science has found out that once two people have sex, an attachment has been formed. Science too have agreed that once two people have sex, there's an attachment. That's why the easiest person to have sex with is your ex. That's why if somebody has ever had sex with you before, you have sex with somebody before, it's very easy that if two of you are in the same environment, there's a high chance you will attract again. That's why people ask me, should I keep in touch with my ex? I say, are you okay? The person is your ex for a reason. Because most adultery thrives between ex. Like my wife was saying, I old firewood, they catch pass. <laughs> Science has come to confirm that once you have sex with someone, there's a high chance. Because your body chemically has been trained to respond to that person. There are pathways that have been created in your brain. In fact, even if you smell the person's perfume, the science is catching up with scripture. Even if you smell the person's perfume, you will, it will, you will go back to feel the same way you used to feel when you had emotions for that person. Ordinarily smelling their perfume. Because you are technically joined to that person. If you are not careful about those attachments, it will continue forever. Some people call it soul ties. Too many people, you have joined with too many people. Are you here, somebody? So it's the strongest bond, it is the marriage, and it is the cutting of the covenants. This one is just point number one. Let me rush the remaining ones. Point number two. All sex is bad outside marriage. Or let me say it this way. All sex outside marriage is bad. All sex outside marriage is what? Bad. What do I mean by this? As long as the sex is between two unmarried people, it is wrong. Fornication and adultery have the same definition. Are you here, somebody? And even in scripture, if you see Galatians 5, where they talk about the works of the flesh, they are both mentioned side by side. I think Galatians 5.16, DJ, if you have, give me. He said, and the work of the flesh are these. DJ, if you have it, give me quickly. They are the same thing. Explain the eyes of God. Um, yeah, you go to verse 17. Or oh, is it 19? I'm going to DJ. No, no, no. I want to where they mention the works of the flesh. 19? DJ, find it yourself now. Uh-huh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, it's 19. He said, now the works of the flesh are what? Manifest. Which are what? These. What's the number one there? What's the second one there? Because they're the same thing. Fornication is having sex with somebody you're not married to. Adultery is having sex with somebody you're not married to. When you're married. Did you get that? Fornication is what? Having sex with somebody you're not married to. Adultery is what? Having sex with somebody you're not married to when you are married. So the real core of it is that you're having sex with somebody you're not married to. People ask me all the time, Pastor, can people in a relationship, can we kiss? I ask them a very simple question. I say, can a married man kiss somebody he's not married to? He say, no. I say, you two are not married to this person. It's the same thing. If kissing was okay between people that you are dating, you're not married. That means a married man too can kiss somebody if there's nothing in kissing. There's something inside. Tomorrow I'll talk a bit about that. Are you here, somebody? All sex after marriage is bad. Why is it bad? Why is it bad? Bishop, the biggest lie, one of the biggest lies Satan is telling young people is that adultery is the one that is bad. Fornication is okay. I'm telling you, go on the street and interview people. If you ask anybody that is it okay for a married man to cheat on his wife, even demons we say it's bad. But ask, young, ask them, ask them people, that if two people are in love, can they be having sex? You say, nah, let me be relationship now. Nah. <laughs> let me be girlfriend and boyfriend. In their uneducated mind, they are separating adultery and fornication, not knowing that they are one and the same. All fornicators are adulterers in training. They are one and the same. 
Who is a fornicator? He's taking something that is not his own. Who is an adulterer? He's taking something that is not his own. You learn it from fornication. You learn adultery from fornication. It's rare to see somebody that was keeping themselves sexually a single to not be cheating in marriage. It's rare. It happens, but it's very rare. You learn adultery from fornication. So, Satan has made many people believe. What you don't realize is that habits die hard. Habits don't disappear. Marriage doesn't change anybody. Many people think on the wedding day, once you say, I do, something just hit your head. Boom! And you will just change. No! It's the same you. The same self-control you did not have when you were single is the same self-control you will not have when you are married. It's the same thing. A lizard that is not married will not become an alligator in marriage. It's the same thing that you are. If you didn't have self-control when you were single, marriage won't give you self-control. That is even one of the real blessings of keeping yourself sexually pure when you're single. You are developing self-control. If you can't manage the self-control when you're single, it will be difficult to manage it in marriage. Many people think marriage stops sexual temptation. It doesn't. It even heightens it. In fact, you become more attractive. Especially for a man. You become more, more, more attractive. Because women like what somebody else has. <laughs> I'm not afraid of you. I'll tell you now. <laughs> this is why I came from Lagos all the way. <laughs> so I can't be shy. We men don't, they like what another person is holding. Women don't like single men like that again. You know, nobody, no, somebody that no, nobody wants. The moment you say, I have a girlfriend, I have a wife, that's what women want. So marriage doesn't stop sexual temptation. It even increases it. So if you didn't have self-control before marriage, it won't disappear inside marriage. You won't suddenly begin to have control. For, uh, again, me and my wife, were also infidelity recovery specialists. So we have people that have had adultery in their marriage. 99.9% of the time, most of the time when they are adultery in marriage, you find out that both of them were fornicating before they married. So I tell them, he's just cheating on you, but two of you were cheating on God. Imagine two arm robbers saying, let's be truthful. <laughs> integrity pays. Two arm robbers say, let's focus on integrity. Let's, let, let, this, let this relationship be built on integrity. Two arm robbers. Let our, two, two Yahoo boys say our, our foundation sh- of this partnership should be integrity and trust. <laughs> you are both thieves. So stop. If you are cheating with him now, he will cheat with, on you tomorrow. Many people are building foundations that can never last. You are building a foundation on God. This is why if you are a born again Christian, this message is not for everybody. If you are a born again Christian, you must understand the power of building the right foundation. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So, see, that what pastor was saying. Fasting and prayer won't change your foundation. Imagine you have built a three-story building, but they didn't do the foundation well. You say, let's hold hands and fast. To change the foundation. Say, if the foundation be destroyed, even the righteous can't do anything about it. So don't build a faulty foundation with fornication. And you don't want to see adultery inside the marriage. Both of you are cheating on God together now. He will cheat on you tomorrow. You have taught him that there's no use to be, to, 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 to be, to, to be holy. You have taught him there's no use to stand with integrity. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Hmm. So all sex outside marriage is sin. You are building the habit and the culture of sinning against God. The habit and the culture of not having the fear of God. The habit and the culture of taking what's not your own. That habit and culture won't disappear. In fact, you have built an appetite. You see, now that you are single, you have built, you have, let me tell you, as a human being, this is why everything God tells us to do is for our good, not for his good. This message of not fornicating is not because of God. God It won't affect God. If you fornicate a million times, God will not be affected. Guess who will be affected? You. So he's telling us this to protect us. God knows how you were created. You were wired in a way that lifestyle forms a habit. And a habit now determines the lifestyle. So God knows that's how he wired you. Habits, you are created as a plain slate where you can be molded. So every action you take is molding something in you. The more you now do it, is, let me give you an example. How many of you remember, or if you have been in a place where you put a chair in a certain ground that is not strong. As long as that chair is there, shaking there, after a while, you start seeing what? A hole. Where this, the, the leg is. Are you correct? Get what I'm saying? That's how you are as a human being. The first time they put the chair there, there was no hole. 
But as long as that thing continues, it will make an imprint. And even when you remove the chair, the hole will still be there. That's what happens to you. You are created to be affected by your actions. If you start to fornicate now, it becomes a part of your life. It forms inside you. So even when you want to stop, you find that it's hard to stop. Because you have built that culture. If you are your, you are your boyfriend now, you are having sex, you are used to stealing it. There's an app. Bible says stolen waters is sweet. There's a sweetness. How many of you have been frying plantain before? And before, he, before you serve food, you ate one. Which one is sweeter? The one you ate when you are frying it or the one when they serve it on the plate? When you are frying it, it's very sweet. Stolen water is sweet. That's what the Bible confirms it. That stolen water is what? Sweet. But the damage of stolen water is that by the time they now serve the real food, you have stolen three, four, five, six. By the time they serve the food, everybody's enjoying the food. You, you're already full. This is why many people in their marriage, they are not happy in marriage. People ask me all the time, say, Pastor, I'm not enjoying sex in my marriage. I say, compared to what? <laughs> many unsatisfied people in marriage is because of past experience. So I'm not enjoying sex with my husband. I'm not enjoying sex with my wife. I say, compared to what? You are comparing to something now. That's why you're not enjoying it. If this is your one and only, you will enjoy it. You know the way they cook beans in your house is the right way they cook it until you eat on that person's home. Somebody's not getting what I'm saying. In every house, they cook beans differently. <laughs> in your mind, you thought this was the official national federal way beans is cooked until you go to another person's house and taste a sweeter one. You don't say, ah! The problem is that by the time you go back to that your own, it won't be sweet again. So, if you are your partner now, you have developed a habit of hiding to have sex, stealing to have sex. By the time you marry and they have now given you license, you'll find that you won't enjoy that kind of free sex again because you're used to the one you hide to do. So, you go and look for where to steal again. Because that's the one you have appetite for. Every action is building an appetite in you. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I'm telling you things they won't tell you about sex. Most of the people displaying sex as free for you, go and check their marriages. Many of them marriages never last. They are telling you lies. They are selling products with it. They are not, it's not real. They are telling you it's free to have sex. It's not real. Because real sex, I'll talk about that tomorrow, about the facts about sex. Real sex is built over time. Bishop, there is a statistics, a survey that people have their best sex at their 50s. Their best sex is from 50s. Because you've built a relationship over time. It's not touch and go. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I say, somebody getting what I'm saying? Hmm. Let me run. Number what am I in? This is just number three since morning. I don't know how we are going to do the 10. <laughs> Next point is just once. That sex is just once. I'm doing it once and for all. It's a lie. Every cocaine addict started with one sniff. Every cigarette addict started with one puff. Every sex addict started with one act. Sexual addiction is real. Addiction to pornography is real. Everybody started with one. Don't let anybody fool you that just once. The drug addict today is just one shot he took. The alcoholic today is one shot. He started, nobody started being a drug addict the first day taking 30 shots. Nobody. It's one. They thought they would just do one and go. Till today they are still there. Number what? I'm just trying to be fast. Number what? Number four. Hmm. We need fornication or sexual activity to check our sexual compatibility. Big lie. That how, 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 how can I know who, who I'm compatible with if we don't test ourselves? All these things, they sound smart until you really think about it. So you're in a church like this. You're looking for sex. I don't know why Christians, some Christians think these stupid things. You say, I want to test ourselves. So how many people are you going to test? And girls too, stop allowing people to test you. How many people are you going to Okay, So you test the first one. It doesn't work. So what are you going to do? Test another one. It doesn't work well. What are you going to do? By that time, it has, it has become a habit. You, you started by wanting to test. You're already a sexual addict. 
you are used to having multiple sex partners. Somebody get what I'm saying? You don't need sexual experience to find sexual compatibility. What we need is sexual commitment. It is sexual commitment, not sexual compatibility. There is no such thing as sexual compatibility. Oh, the devil is a liar. I say the devil is a liar. He's telling young people that you need to find somebody that you and him have the same uh, uh, sexual. <laughs> Let me tell you, let's even imagine as a single person, you find somebody that two of you have the same sexual passion. It's just for now. Once life begins to happen, there's nothing like sexual compatibility. What you have is sexual commitment. What are the chances that two people will always be in the mood for sex at the same time? It doesn't happen. What we do in marriage is that sometimes my wife is the one in the mood and I serve her. Sometimes I'm in the mood and she serves me. That's sexual commitment. She might not be in the mood at the time I'm in the mood. So what you need is somebody committed, not somebody compatible. If I'm compatible, I'm not in the mood today. And as life begins to happen, as a man grows older, his testosterone drops. So he, you, there's not like compatibility. As a woman starts to have children, her desire for sex will change. Somebody, somebody has sucked her breast all day. You two want to come and suck the same breast. She born twins. You don't, somebody don't suck her breast. Born into night. You come in the night. You want to continue the sucking. Say, so leave this place, okay? <laughs> I came from Lagos. Now, I can't be shy. I have to tell you. I travel to come and tell you this thing. So, I cannot be shy. As a woman begins to have children, her sexual libido will change for a bit. Children are stressing her all day. Have you given birth? Have you seen two, two year old, three year old, four year old? Where they run up and down? Their energy is not here. Brr, brr, three, run up and down. After the woman chases all the three children. And sometimes she still goes to her own work. Then she comes back inside traffic. Then you are saying, hey, darling. <laughs> so look, be careful. <laughs> That's the deceit. Sometimes he's telling you that a social, if a man self is having stress at work alone, it can affect social compatibility. He's not even interested in sex. There are too many things that can affect sex. There is no compatibility. It's only commitment. I will not be in the mood sometimes. But I will serve you with my body. Are you here, somebody? So, we're learning sexual compatibility. So, you, 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 with all your sleeping around, by the time you test 15 people, you now have PhD. <laughs> you have sexual PhD certificate. Then you now can marry somebody that has OND. The experience you are gathering is wasted till you meet who you marry. The, your whole experience should start from the person you marry. When you find that person, two of you start learning each other for the rest of your life. Not that I want to be a globo. I want to be a professional. Let me learn many things. So the information you are gathering is useless where you are going. You have PhD. You marry OND. You are used to people hanging you on the fan. You say, honey, hang me now. Spin me. Spin me. He say, I don't know about spinning. <laughs> I came from Lagos. I told you, I can't be shy. I will tell you now. <laughs> I travel from far to come and tell you this thing. Are you here, somebody? Some of the experience and appetite you are building is not needed where you are going. Bishop, I can't say one woman. She's the only... Virgin Mary, second Virgin Mary I know, personally. She's a Virgin Mary. She has a child without sex. That's Virgin Mary. Just that her name is not Mary. She has married for seven years, Bishop. Seven years. She said she married as a virgin. Because tomorrow I'll talk to a bit about virgins. Virgins think that become a virgin. God must give, carry a perfect husband and bring on a tray and say, Dorime. <laughs> And give me because I'm virgin. <laughs> Marriage doesn't work like that. Oh. If you're a virgin, it's good. It's good, but you seem to learn about the principles of marriage and how to choose the right husband. Don't think that God owes you. So I've kept myself. The keeping yourself is for yourself. It didn't benefit God. It's for you. It's for your sanity. Are you here, somebody? Because uh -huh. people think God owes me. God owes me. <clears throat> After 
I kept myself. All my friends were fornicating. They were doing nothing. Me, I kept myself. God must just bring one tree, one perfect man with bow tie. Bring it. <laughs> you will see you to learn about marriage. So this is my darling uh, person. Married as a virgin. So they did not have premarital sex. And she found out when they got married, the guy didn't touch her one year. Didn't touch her two years. But she found out that sometimes she would hear the guy watching pornography in the bathroom. Those violent ones. They call it BDSM or so. Where there's beating, there's choking, there's the tie neck. That's the kind of sex the guy likes. He has been exposed to that when he was single. Now that he's married, he can't even have normal sex. So he can't touch his wife. They went for different counseling, medical and other counseling. The doctor they went to me said, okay, honey, madam, maybe you should give it a try. She wanted to try. When they beat, the beating, <laughs> the beating where they give them. <laughs> Have you seen those people, the way they do those things? They will tie their neck, they will bring, we belt, kick. That's only, that's only way the man can be aroused. If you never blow your eye, he can't arouse. When they beat the girl, she run. So, after six years of marriage, no sex, she went to do IVF. So, she has a child. That's why I call her Virgin Mary. She has not had sex, but she has a child. So they did IVF, so she had a child. But they have still not had sex in about seven years of marriage. But she has a child. That's what happens when you go and be gathering nonsense experience. Because you are building an appetite that your partner will never be able to satisfy. You have dated five men and you slept with all five. One is a good kisser. The other one is good with smooshing. The other one is good with rubbing back. The other one is good with massaging feet. Five. Then you marry one man. How can he only he meet this syllabus? He can never meet this job description. He can't. <laughs> he can never be satisfied. Only him should meet all these things. See, until you meet your partner, you don't need any experience. I mean, you know I cancelled from all over the world. I have some people I cancelled. When we're talking about sex, because there's a class to talk about sex, the husband says he doesn't like oral sex, the wife says he doesn't like oral sex. I say, two of you, you are blessed. Be going. You see, they've never experienced it, they don't need it. You, you have already experienced too many things. So by the time you meet a bomb boy now, he doesn't know anyone. You say, only spin me now, spin me, I'll hold it like this. You say, I don't know. Before long, before long, you start desiring to go and look for your ex. Because that's how you are satisfied. Bishop, I, 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 counseled, I, I heard of somebody that on wedding night, on the wedding night, not the wedding night, she was texting her ex that he's not like you. She was texting her ex about her husband. Wedding night, because they are just really having sex. Of course, the husband can never be as good as a boyfriend you have been sleeping with for five years that has lent your body, know your body. So she was texting her ex. Wedding night, not the day after, sir, that he's not like you. He's not as good as you. I miss you. Wedding night. The things some of you are doing, you are putting yourself in trouble before time. Because you are developing an appetite that no bomb boy can meet. You are sleeping with five men. Some of you, 30 men. Some of them are heavy sugar daddies. That's why Ron's girls will never stay married. They will either never get married or never stay married. It's not a cause, it's just a fact. You are, you are dating one very rich man that gives you 200k, 300k. You are not going to marry bomb boy. His whole salary for one month is 90k. And he still wants to be head of the home. <laughs> and your mind, I say, what's doing this one? This is your 90,000. They give me 150 for transport. You are talking, your whole salary, yeah, you want, you're shouting about food. Go and sit down. You will never respect that husband God has blessed you with. So I are used to sugar daddy that flies you everywhere in the world. So you, before you know it, you either leave that house or you start running your business from the house. The marriage will never work. Number what? Let me try and round up. Ah, you are not helping me. You are making me gist too much. You are not helping me at all. Number five. Sex doesn't hurt anybody. It doesn't hurt anybody. That's not a lie. You know, have you heard that lie before? I'm waiting there. As long as I'm not, I'm not hurting anybody, it's okay. Sex will always hurt people. Se I laugh. Bishop, wait, wait for a shout about COVID. I laugh. COVID numbers are nothing. Compared to abortion numbers. What did be COVID? COVID they learn where abortion day. Sex doesn't hurt anybody. Sex is hurting people. People are dying every day because of sex. That's why it pains me that they are saying they want to do mandatory vaccine. I'm saying you do mandatory celibacy. 
There are other things you can do mandatory. Not vaccine. Leave people. You say that we don't want them to die. Leave them the one that made them die. People they die every day. You know, concern you now. You know, you know, even do mandatory prosperity. A mandatory vaccine. Now you they think about. Because you don't want them to die. Sex is killing more people than any other thing. We're not even counting HIV, STD. One of my cousins. They are from a family where they've been, the whole family has been struggling. The whole family. They are my direct cousins. So it's not that they, they are close people to me. My direct cousin. The whole family has been struggling. Finally, one of the sons began to do well in one African country. He began to do well in business. So he began to develop a small house in the village. You know, in, in the east, once you start to build a house, you are, it's a sign that you have, you have arrived. He was building one small house, doing well. He was a promising young man. Everybody knew him. We were happy for him. Because the family finally had a breakthrough. So he now told them, look for wife for me. Look for, please, men especially. Don't do all those look for wife for me. Take time and learn about marriage and build friendships. Don't just see any girl. Did you find girl for me and marry? So when they say, look for wife for me, they went to bring the village prostitute for her, for him. Most of the women that are available for those kind of easy hookups, they are available. They are too available. They went to bring the village prostitute, but he, of course he didn't know. Slept with her on one trip that he came home. Before long, they found out the girl had HIV. So he too contacted HIV. The house is still uncompleted today. He's dead now. He died of HIV. You say sex is not hurting anybody. STDs. Many babies are affected by mothers that have STDs. Go and check science is confirming that. Then let's talk about abortion. Do you know how many people are aborted every year in the world? We're talking about COVID number. What is COVID? No people are, are, being, are being killed. Abortion. Between 1970, something in America, and 2020 or there about, America aborted over 40 million babies. The whole Ghana is 30 something million. So America aborted Ghana. So imagine the whole Ghana, America has aborted it. That's a whole nation. A whole nation. 40 million plus abortions. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I say sex is not hurting anybody. Ask something. This nonsense you are saying. Ask something that sex is not hurting anybody. He will tell you sex finished him. Ask Abraham. See, today Ishmael is still fighting Isaac. Ask David. His kingdom and his family rocked. Ask Solomon. Started as the wisest man, ended as the most foolish man. You say sex not anybody. Let's come to modern day terms. Most of your musicians are raising baby, uh, are having baby mamas. Three, four, five. Most of your popular people. And to you, it's not a big deal. She'll be taking care of them. Statistics, let's go. I'm a, I'm a coach. Statistics, go, go back. Most people that grow up in single parent homes are the ones that end up in prison. They lack self-confidence. They are usually victims of abuse. Do you know how difficult it is for a father and mother being together to raise children? Imagine when only one person. In animal kingdom, bishop, in animal kingdom, when two birds um, mate and lay egg, one must stay with the egg. Why the other goes to find food? If two of them leave those eggs, somebody will come and eat those eggs. Fry it as a mishai and eat it. So by the time one person is raising kids, what will happen is that as you go to play, as you go to party, as you go to work, your children are open to abuse. One of my daughters was both abused by male staff and female staff in her house. So today she deals with homosexuality, she deals with promiscuity. Statistically, single people that grow up in single homes are prone to attack, prone to end up in prison, prone not to do well academically, prone not to do well in life. It's not that I'm saying it's facts. It's not opinion. It's facts on ground. And they grew up not knowing what it means for a husband and wife to live together. See, there are parts of a child that only the husband or the father can bring. There are parts of the child only the mother can supply. And it's God that designed it that way. There are parts only the father can bring. A father gives identity. A father gives direction. A father gives correction. A father gives stability. Gives confidence. A mother brings love. Brings balance. When you have only one. One of the most popular baby dolls in Nigeria. You know the most popular baby doll in Nigeria? I don't want to mention her name because it's risky, but it's, because girls are risky. One of the most popular baby dolls. Bishop, you know baby dolls? Those men that dress like women. The most popular one in Nigeria. 
he shared his own story how he became a baby doll he said his father had many wives so his father never really stayed at home so he was only close to his mother he said because he was close to his mother he began to learn makeup learn how to dress like a woman and all that so today now he's a man but he's living as a woman because there was no male figure in the house it's facts I'm not, it's not opinion it's facts he shared this whole same story one of, one, one of my lecturers from Canada shared his own story, Bishop. He said when he was very young, his parents left him with his grandmother. His grandmother makes clothes. So one day the grandmother made a dress for him. Gave him the dress. I told him, you look so beautiful. Because his parents abandoned him. He had a sense of abandonment. His parents abandoned him. So the mother, his grandmother kept praising him for dressing like that. So he continued to dress like a girl. He was in his middle 30s going to 40 when as a man, then he began to have those same feelings of when he was dressing like a girl. He said that's when he's ever most appreciated. So he began to think he was homosexual. So before he knew it, he went to do surgery. They removed his genitals and made him to be like a girl. He was working in a, in a multinational in America, any big money, had family, wife and children. By the time he did that, he lost his wife, lost his job. Until he came back to his senses. But that time they had done surgery, they removed everything that made him look like a man. So, sex doesn't hurt anybody, you're joking. I will give you many, many more real life experiences. Sex has sacked American presidents. Sex has sex have sacked presidents of big companies. Sex has sacked pastors. Sex has sacked anybody you want to imagine, big military men. Was that armies could not win, sex won. You say sex is not powerful, you must be joking. One, 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 one president of the fastest fast food chain, the biggest fast food chain in the world. I can even mention the name, it's okay. McDonald's. One of their presidents. If you know anything about McDonald's, one of the biggest fast food chain. One of their presidents. He said, they said his income, Bishop, they said his income monthly was somewhere around $3 million. Monthly income. Biggest, that's all his um, benefits and co. Biggest fast food joint in the world was the president globally. He was divorced. But he now had sex with a junior staff. And according to office policy. So it wasn't even a sin. Morally for them, it wasn't a bad thing because he was single. So morally, based on their own culture, it's not bad for two adults to have sex. Because they're not married. But office policy, ethically says a senior staff cannot have sex or relationship with a junior staff. So he lost the job after just a few months on the job. I said, how do you go home and tell your family that you lost a three million a month job because of sex. If his sense was working, all he needs to do is to get to resign that day. He didn't want to have the sex. Just resign. Any amount they are paying you a salary. If I'm earning three million a month, I can pay you now. But you see, sex doesn't allow you to think. Are you here, somebody? You see, sex is not hurting anyone. Should we count all the rape that happens in the world? Should we count all the sexual abuse of both children and adults? The devil will tell you sex doesn't hurt anybody. But he's a liar as usual. Sex hurts people. Are you here, somebody? Number what am I in? Ah, my time is up. Mm, I'll end with this one because my time is already up. I'll probably continue the, the remaining three tomorrow. You are not the only one keeping yourself. Or let me say it this way. What the boy says about sex? That you are the only one. The lie they're telling is that you are the only one. You are not the only one keeping yourself. Satan tells people that everybody is doing it. Are you here, somebody? Everybody is what? Doing it. It's a lie of the devil. There are many, many, many people that have not bowed their knees to sexual immorality. Are you here, somebody? He said, ah, nobody's a virgin again. It's a lie. I tell people all the time, I've wedded more virgins than non-virgins as a pastor. He said, ah, pastor, how do you know they are virgins? Because some of them, even after the wedding, we're still instructing them where to put what? Mm hmm also, I've waited for people that two months after they've still not had sex because they just don't know what to do. <laughs> it sounds funny, but it's better for them to learn at their pace. They have a long... You see, marriage is for life. Ten years, you are still with this person. Twenty years, so there's no rush. You have all your life to have sex. Are you here, somebody? It's not everybody doing it. Don't let the devil deceive you. Everybody's funny. It's not true. There are always people that are doing it God's way. Can't count the amount of adults I've counseled that are virgins. Many of them. Keeping it. Are you here, somebody? 
Because they understand how powerful it is. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. You'll be among those that will be living right in the name of Jesus. I say you'll be among those that will keep yourself to the last day in the name of Jesus. You will give your husband or your wife the gift of your purity. In the name of Jesus. Whatever is trying to drag you into a life of immorality. I break that spirit in the name of Jesus. You will live well. God will keep you. God will strengthen you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Were you blessed this evening? All right. Thank you so much, sir. We, we have some questions. Okay. We would like to entertain right. some questions. So, right. um, if you have questions to ask, we would like you to just uh, indicate. Our ministers will be with you, and then we'll get the questions so that we can do that very fast. Thank you. You have questions, please just indicate so that we take that section. All right, if you're writing, you can quickly do that and also pass on to any of our ministers. Those watching online, you can also drop it on the comment box. Somebody is also waiting online to also pick your questions if you are watching. We have people watching for over 20 countries now. Uh, so you have questions, please just uh, indicate. God oh, bless you. Thank you. You can celebrate that. Thank you. Pastor, we have one question here. It says, how do you make things right after all these things? Okay. <laughs> after all these things, how do you make things right? All right. Um, first of all, repent of the lifestyle. Um, then secondly, in some cases, you need to consciously pray and break ties that are holding you. Because sometimes you still find out that you are still highly emotional or attached to the person you were having sex with. All right? So sometimes you still need to properly stand your ground spiritually and make sure those things are broken. Then invest and immerse yourself in spiritual knowledge, in spiritual things. Build up your spiritual capacity, your spiritual life. And continue living right. There's nothing, you know, it has happened, it has happened. Just make sure it's no longer continuing in your life. Make sure it's not going to creep up. Then you cut off contact with those people that are dragging you into that lifestyle. You can't have friends that all of them are wrong girls or all of them are bad boys and you want to live right. No. You have to come out from amongst those crowds and put yourself in a more positive environment. Yeah. Okay, sir. I think this, uh, this question came from the back. I guess the person came late, but we still have to make it known. How then do you test or know the sexual compatibility of your partner before you get married since you said sex before marriage is bad? Okay. In order to avoid sexual problems in marriage. Good. Praise God. Obviously, the person came late, truly. Because we spent a good time. That's why you must get messages like this. Watch them again and again. Um, there's nothing like sexual compatibility. It's just a myth. It's a lie. Even people that have the same sexual energy when they were dating, when they marry, they find out they don't have the same. You can't have the same. Dating and marriage are not the same thing. They are not the same. When you are dating, you are not cooking. You don't have children. You don't have bills. You don't have all those things. When you are married, you are living with someone 24 hours a day. There must be more between two of you than just sex. Like I said, I wanted to talk about that tomorrow. Because what happens is that you need to build real intimacy. It's not sex that builds intimacy. It's intimacy that builds sex. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. Alright? So what you need is sexual commitment. Not sexual compatibility. Nobody's compatible. Nobody's compatible. All right. yeah. So we have one question here. Let me just take the three together. Is it true that sex promotes love in relationships? Okay. Secondly, it says, can someone uh, that's addicted with sexual intercourse change his ways? And lastly, can sex lead to spiritual husband experience? Okay, let's take it one by one. So read number one again. Okay, number one. Is it true that sex promotes love in relationship? Okay, I've kind of answered that already. Um, sex is not love. In fact, it's one of my points here. In the 10 points, sex is not love. Many young people think sex is love. That if I love you, I'll have sex with you. It's not true. If love, sex was love, all prostitutes would be in love. They would be in love. Sex is not love. The danger of sex is that it just creates an artificial bonding. All right? It's not the real bonding that will last you a lifetime. So it's like you've been attached to something you don't want to be attached to. 
Do you understand? So, sex makes you emotional. Even with someone you don't plan to go long with. But you find that you are still hanging with the person. You want to go your way. You know that you don't want to marry this person. But because you're having sex, you're attached to the person. Alright? So, sex is not love at all. If love was sex or sex was love, prostitutes would be in love. No. Sex is a different thing. It's not has nothing to do with love. Uh, and tomorrow when I talk about intimacy, we'll talk about that. It's when you build real love that the sex becomes enjoyable. It's not the other way around. It's not sex that makes you love somebody you don't love. No. All right. Second question. On that okay, the second one was that can someone who is addicted to sex change his ways? Yes, we've also answered that. You can by changing your lifestyle. Um, in some cases, you will need to pray consciously to break those ties and work with God, work with the Spirit of God to develop a new habit and lifestyle. Yes, you can. And the third question. The third one says, can sex lead to spiritual husband experience? Interestingly, there is a high probability for that. Because like I told you at the beginning, sex opens, it connects both your spirit, soul, and body. So when you continuously have sex with someone, there's a high chance that spiritual activities can occur from that. There are people that have shared such experience that once they had sex with someone, they began to have nightmares or began to have certain things. So it's very possible for you to open spiritual portals with sex. In fact, in some ancient, um, not even ancient, they still have it now, in some ancient religions, sex is part of their worship. They come on the altar. In fact, even in Bible days, if you go and read the Bible, when they were worshipping the calf and the idols, it's part of what they do on the altar. They have sex. So they have te- what they call temple prostitutes. So when you come to worship in those temples, you pay money, then you sleep with the prostitutes on the altar. So it's, sex is definitely a spiritual thing, which is what we've been saying all day. Definitely a spiritual thing. So there's a high chance for that, yes. Okay, sir. This question is from our online viewer. How can one break all links with his ex? Ah, you block them on all platforms. Block them on all platforms, all right, and get some accountability. All these things we'll talk about again tomorrow. Get some accountability in your life, all right. People that check up on you and all that. We'll talk about some of this in detail tomorrow. But you break all platforms and get born again and break soul ties spiritually too, all right. Very important because you're already attached to this person. You need to be prayed for and broke. Break it. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, another online viewer is oral sex allowed in the context of a Christian marriage. Um, I usually don't like to answer that question in people's church. The last church I answered that question, they didn't invite me again. (laughs) So when Bishop comes, he will answer that question. I like the pastor of the church to answer that kind of question. The last place I preached, I answered it, they didn't like me. They didn't like the answer. They didn't invite me again. So (laughs) Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, this person wants to know, what do you do when you are addicted to sex toys, but you are still a virgin? Um, yes now it sounds funny but that's what's happening today that's what's happening today so definitely you're already dealing with a bad habit and marriage won't cure it because you'll find out that your sex toys will satisfy you more than your husband or wife once you start so that's the challenge because you have already trained your brain you're you are, you are a very malleable person as a human being so what you, how you train yourself is what, how you become so you need to break that habit so there are therapies that can also help you with uh, ways to break addictions that's what you need but the basic things are the normal prayer, study the word, accountability, and the rest. But I would think in a case like that, you must also need to talk to a sexologist or somebody that will help you break addictions, all right? So that it will help you more in depth. But it's a problem, yes. Okay. What if your partner decides you must have sex before marriage? How do you go about it? Oh, then, um, I, I, I don't know if you are Christians. If you are not Christians, it's a different ballgame. But if you're a Christian, that person has already told you. That they have no intention of pleasing God. So why do you want to marry someone that you can't trust at all? It's not about you. It's about lack of self-control. The person has no self-control. So it's like, it's like an arm robber saying, come and put your money in our bank. That's what he's telling. He has told you that I have no self-control. Now, I'm not saying Christians don't fall into sin. Christians fall into sin. But let's know that is a mistake. Let's know that we fell into sin. Not that I'm insisting we must fornicate. Somebody telling you that has no regard for God, has no regard for you, and has no regard for their own life. You can't marry a reckless person like that. You're all right? So don't, don't, you need to leave that relationship immediately. He has even given you a good uh, warning for you to run. He has no self-control and no respect for God. You don't want to marry a man. See, when you marry, it's a different ball game. Once you have married, if he, if he goes about starts sleeping, what will he do? He's, now he has told you that I don't have sense. I don't have self-control. You're asking what you want to do. Run with your life. Marry somebody that's spiritually compatible with you. Somebody that has a fear for God and wants to live for God. 
All right. Mm -hmm. If sex is not love, then what is love? Uh -huh. You will come for next year's seminar or get all our other. We have taught it in details, okay? But love largely is that unselfish commitment you have towards another person, all right? So that's what it is. But I can't go into more details. All right. Okay, this person wants to know, he's in the same business with his ex. What is he going to do? Oh, yeah. Walk yourself out of that business or find a way to separate yourself from it because you are just going to be, especially if you feel there's a temptation. Now, there are some people that somehow um, it won't be a threat to them. I'm not a big supporter of it because even when you marry, your spouse will still be under tension if you always have to go and work with your ex. So it's not a great thing for you. I believe you can find another business or find another way to give yourselves gap. All right? I feel so. So find a way. I don't have the details of your story. So it's difficult for me to give you a well-rounded advice. Okay? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. It's a good evening, sir. I heard somewhere that if you are still a virgin at a certain age, it tends to mess up your mind and makes you weak. How true is this? We all know who is spreading that one, Abby. Who is spreading that information? It's the devil now. There's no such thing, either scientifically or scripturally. There's no such thing, so, yeah. Satan spreads all this nonsense just to make people start sleeping around. Nonsense. Yeah, go ahead. So my question is, guys, single guys who already had, uh, who had a child keeps coming to ask me for a relationship. Is it a good thing? From an online viewer. Yeah, it's not, the, the issue is not whether they have a child or not. You're focused on the wrong thing. There are people that don't have a child, but they've aborted 30 children. There are people that don't have a child, but they have in, a rough or bad lifestyle that you can't stand. What you need to focus on is the character of this person. Are they Christians? Are they changed? Are they born again? And how did they have this child? What's the involvement of the mother of the child? So, you're not asking the right questions. It's not that they have a child that make them bad. All right? You're asking the wrong questions. So, focus on the real issues that will affect the marriage. Not whether they have child or not. So, yeah. Okay. There are many single mothers that have married, single fathers that have married. It doesn't make them bad people. Focus on the person and the circumstances. Yeah. Go ahead. My question is, okay, I think it is similar to, from an online viewer, what do you do if your partner leaves you because you have told her lately that you have a child? It's similar. Okay, your partner left because you told the person you had a child. Hey, thank God now. God has uh, delivered you from somebody that is not caring. Do Thanksgiving on Sunday. In Rock of Ages then. Go ahead. Trust God. For, see, as a single mom, you need somebody that can accommodate you and your child. Not somebody that says, I love all you, I want to be out to church. And in our church, we've voted many single moms. They are married today to even ministers. Single men who married them. Ministers, pastors. So, don't worry yourself. Just trust God. Your eyes should be on God. Forget your circumstances. So, what you need to do, I have a video on, on my YouTube channel. Mistakes single moms make. So have it there. Go and watch that video. Seven mistakes single moms make. Stop looking down at yourself. Nothing is wrong with you just because you have a child. In fact, in many cases, the fact that you have a child proves that you are even fitter. It means you will have children. Uh -huh. So don't worry yourself. Okay. Uh, this is from an online viewer also. He wants to know, what do you do when your partner told you that there will be no sex until after marriage because she's a virgin? And after marriage, you find out that she's not a virgin. All right. Um, <laughs> praise God. All right. Again, um, I'm going to just take everything you are saying at surface level. Because it's possible in some cases where the person is a virgin and there is no shedding of blood. So maybe that's why you are thinking they are not a virgin. Um, but if this person has agreed that they lied to you, um, it shows that the marriage was built on a faulty foundation. However... It doesn't automatically mean you should leave. Um, I need to ask you, apart from virginity, were there other things that you saw while you married this person? It was the only virginity that made you marry this person. If it's only virginity, then something is wrong with you, not with them. All right? So if they have other good qualities, other good things, um, the truth is that people don't understand what marriage is. Marriage is a covenant. It's a covenant. There's nobody you marry that you won't inherit liabilities. What, what, you, what you say in the altar is I do. You are saying I do to both your assets and your life. That's what covenant is. But now there's these young people. Once I'm tired, I'm done. I'm done. And, that, and that's what's wrong with the dating culture we have. All this dating. That's why Christians don't really date. Because once as you're doing dating, dating, you're practicing going in and out of relationships. And once you practice using I'm out, I'm done, three, four times before you marry, 
when you have problem in marriage, guess what you will say? I'm done. That's what you are used to you're solving all your problems. So, um, <laughs> you know, yes, go ahead. Okay, myself and my boyfriend just stopped having sex. Ah, thank Is you. there any advice for us? Thank you. People have tried. We'll give you medal. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> okay, but on a serious note, on a serious note, I also have a YouTube video titled So You Want to Save It, You Want to Save Sex Till Marriage. Um, you need to put boundaries in place at this point. If you, you, know, you don't want to continue living in sin, you need to put boundaries in place, then be accountable. Marriage is a serious issue. I don't know why young people will have relationships and hide it. If you a serious thing, let your pastors, your ministers know. And they will provide you counseling, guidance, accountability, mentoring. So be accountable to someone, a leader in your church that sees you, that knows you. And say, hey, this is the challenge you are dealing with. Help us. So put the boundaries in place. Avoid seeing yourself in cozy places. I even see young Christians go and visit their house, fiancé or and they sleep over in the same room. It's not Satan tempting you. You are the one tempting Satan. <laughs> so you live your life in an honorable way. You know, both of you come to an agreement of what you want to do and put the boundaries in place. And get some accountability, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, this person wants to know, does everybody come naturally with same sex drive? Or some have higher sex drive than others? Okay, good question, interestingly. Of course, people come with different sex drive. That's simple. People come with different... that's, why, that's why I said at the beginning, there's no such thing as sexual compatibility. People come with different... Some people have very high sex drive. Some have very low sex drive. It happens. So, the key, again, is the commitment. When we come together, we need to agree. And say, hey, beyond sex, do we even love each other? What people are trying to do, they're trying to build their relationship on sex. No, sex is not the foundation of your relationship. Sex is an offshoot of the foundation. Of so the quality of sex you have in marriage is determined by the quality of relationship you have. So if two people love themselves, you'll find that they are constantly trying to please each other. It's when two people don't love themselves that they like to draw agreement. That you bring 20% of the income, I bring 80%. There's no love. When there's love... I'm bringing 100% of what I have. You are bringing 100% of what you have. It's when there's no love, we start drawing line. Say you, your bed, the bed, here. Don't cross here. Keep your pillow here. You, there's no love. You are, you are in a business transaction. When there's love, if my sex drive is lower than your own, I will do my best to try to please you. I might never meet your level, but you, you too will see that where I used to be is not where I am now. That I've moved forward just to bless you. And you two that have a uh, superman sex drive. You two know that, ah, see where I used to be, but now because my wife, let me calm down. That's why God doesn't want sex to control anybody. You always should control the sex, not the sex control. You are not, you are, you are, you are not like animals. Animals can't control themselves. But human beings, we can control ourselves. So you can't say, oh, I want to have sex three times a day. If I don't have it, I'll die. Then you are sick. You, what you need is treatment, not wife. You must get to the point where, even if I want to have sex three times a day, but for some reason I can't have it, I will not die. And I won't have a bad attitude. Yeah, but to say, ah, me, yo, if it's not three times, I won't be normal. Yeah, it's hospital you need. You need treatment. Because it shows that sex has taken over your life. Because things will still happen. If your wife is pregnant, if your wife has traveled, if your spouse is not around, what will you do? That self-control way they dodge. Hmm? Last, last, now you go settle this matter. You must have self-control. All right? Have you been blessed? Yes. Is there still more? Are we done? <laughs> well, I wanted to take this as the last. But yes, oh, yeah, take, it, take it as the last. Yes. Say, a friend of mine asked me if, is it right, if it's right to tell your husband about your bad past, especially when, it when your past involves you being a wrong girl or prostitute. Is it good to tell your husband about that past? Okay. Um... We brought some of our books as usual. Um, I can't mention all of them, but you know the books, Seven Questions Wise Women Ask, Seven Qualities Wise Men Want, Who Should I Marry, 25 Wrong Reasons People Enter Relationships, A to Z of Marriage. Loads of books here. I want to encourage you to invest in your own future, invest in your marriage. The books are available for sale out there. Make sure you get them. Um, to for the question, hmm, I would say it depends. All right? I can't sit here and tell you, just tell your spouse everything. It's the, it's the easy thing to say, but after many years of doing this job, I know that there's not everybody that can handle all information at once. Yes, some people will collapse. Um, so I encourage that. Build some level of trust first. Build some reliability. Now, if there are important things like 
um, you've had an abortion or you've had children, that's an important fact that is present. If it's how many people you have slept with, I don't think you necessarily need to do roll call. Because I've seen some people say, write all their name and phone number. <laughs> so, I think you, you need the wisdom of God. Um, in, in that case, I would like you to get a counselor. I also need to know what the kind of strength the man has for information. But if you had lived a wayward lifestyle, I think you can give them a summary, an idea of what has happened. So that he won't be surprised tomorrow if something from the past you know, surfaces, surfaces. But I don't think you necessarily need to go in all the details. It might damage that person's mind. I and my wife, we've cancelled couples that something that happened 20, 30 years ago, when they were not even married, it was still affecting their marriage, when their children were already adults. So let's not underestimate the impact of some information. So I would say, use wisdom, but be as honest and sincere as you can. God bless you. Thank you.